Hello everyone. In this video, I just wanted to go over how to actually use the footprint chart for execution. Now, this isn't actually going to be a video covering the exact details of what you're reading in a footprint chart. Okay, and there's, because there's plenty of other videos out there that I've got that cover that, you know, covering open interest, etc. But what this is going to be covering is exactly what you want to be kind of doing in order to form a plan with your footprint chart. Now, what I mean by that is, if you're going to be using the footprint chart, the basis of actually implementing it into your plan, into your process, is that it gives you much more variables to actually take control of, track, test, measure, um, compared to like a regular footprint chart, uh, a regular candlestick chart. So let's say, for example, in a candlestick chart, you only have a, very, a, a few parameters. Obviously, you have volume uh, on a per candle basis. Um, you have open, high, low, closes, etc. But within software like Exo Charts, etc., you can have, you know, different chart type range chart uh, range charts. Okay, you can have volume types, uh, volume charts, delta charts, trend reversal charts. All these different variables adding up as well, where you can start to create a plan, a process over this. Okay, um, just one of these, for example, could be some form of liquidity vacuums. Uh, and and things like that where you're actually tracking what's going on specifically at your level with the flow compared to just open high low closes um, and one example of this for example if I just go over how I use it to some extent and an example that I, I, I've built up just for this for this sake um, the first one being that I use range charts okay so a range chart um, is literally just each candle to be the exact same size um, uh, it's going to be covering in this case $150 because I've made my tick size uh, $1 per tick so that's $150 every single candle is going to be covering um, and the way I decipher which range chart size I'm going to be using again we're now introducing more parameters here is through ATR uh, average true range so if you just head over to trading view or whatever tool you want to use you can see at the bottom here I use like a rolling one hour ATR so whatever the ATR is on the hour I'm using that for you know when price is approaching level so if we just go up to the top here um, you know if the time for execution for example was around two o'clock I would roll back an hour for example and I say look you know it's around 120 okay upon the hour before so I'm using that rolling one hour ATR to decipher the range chart size I'm going to be using so now all of a sudden I've instantly created that first step of I have a range chart uh, I have an ATR on you know the rolling hourly and now I'm translating that over to my range chart and that already that first step take some planning out to do you know to say that you're going to be using this for this uh, just to decide your chart type for execution is one variable you've already added that you know regular candlesticks don't offer so that's step one for example in this case step two is okay are we approaching a key level now this is more so universal I guess software such as you know XO etc you can have much more uh, variability over the levels you're actually going to be looking at so for example I mean if you have just this high here um, it's also session high on the day well that, that set the previous session is high so if I just mark this out here okay we can remove the other one here so you can see that we have this high move down and I'm, I'm saying okay let's just say for example I want to be using this high um, as my level of interest yeah and what I want to be doing here is saying okay what is the volume coming through when I'm pushing through this in this case it's 99.7 million also very important factor in this case when you're looking at this type of chart uh, this is aggregated information so you're seeing Bybit, Hyperliquid, Binance um, those three exchanges so I'm seeing 99.7 coming through the level and then as you come back down by the way very quickly okay you can see the volume actually on the push back down was only uh, 61.8 million and you know you can see how much volume is actually you know if you change the text type okay how much volume is covering each individual zone so you can see that you know alongside open interest etc uh, that this is aggressor volume pushing this up some form of mispricing and then instantly push back offside especially with the open interest increasing that shows the aggressors are actually newly longing this and now they're instantly offside but I haven't really gone into too much detail there I've just said you know aggressors longing etc how do I then make this much more specific and tailored down to an actual strategy um, and that is actually by then going okay we're pushing through this level of 99.7 million worth of volume and then on the move back down you're actually doing it with basically essentially half or 60 percent almost and now all of a sudden we've created a parameter between the break volume being x amount percent value and then the retrace or move back down that volume being of x percent you know less than that so
you know, to X amount of volume to push through this and then less volume actually push this down. Okay, like much less, like less than 50%, well, 61% in this case, for example. But you could be using those two variables and saying, okay, if I'm going to be trading like a failed break of a level, I want to see uh, at least, you know, on the retrace, on the move back in, I want to see at least a 65 or 70% move, you know, less than what it was to break the level. Okay, that is step one of this. And also then you can start to look at the candles themselves and go, look, you know, where there was previously a lot of volume coming in, 10 million, 11 million, all of this to break, to push this price through the level. You can see on the, on the move back down exactly because I've changed the text type to volume that you don't actually need this much volume to come and bring this back down here. Okay. And this is step one. You're creating parameters. You're creating variables, um, for yourself. Now I'm just going over one example of this. Now you, this, this is what I'm talking about with footprint charts. Is they, open up a world and variety of variables to actually add into your trading and it's not just you know this tool that's going to magically give you entrances you know when i'm saying for example you need a 70 percent uh you know decrease or a 30 percent decrease for example on the retrace back here these are variables that you need to be going out and testing okay same with open interest you know you want to be seeing for example 100 million uh, notion or whatever coming into your level you know you're creating parameters in which then you can actually execute off and refine Okay, same thing with like liquidations, you know, you can say here to see at the bottom 100k, 81k, 55k, maybe that's not enough in your system to then warrant an actual execution parameter. Okay, maybe you're looking at all these other factors that you can be taking into account. Um, some other things you can also be doing, by the way, is let's say, for example, let's put up the same situation we just had here is adding multi. Now, would I recommend this for new people? No, but if you're going to be looking to create a system that's advanced, etc., then you know you can definitely do this. One thing, for example, upon this breach of this high, just as an example in this case, um, we're looking at the range chart here on the top in the main center panel, center console almost, right? And we're looking at range charts, and it doesn't, you know, it give, you have some aspect of time because you have the time at the bottom in the FPBS here. But let's say I want to be looking over here. Okay remove the red one in this case let's say i'm looking at the time chart here on the 15 minute i can actually now look and say look i don't want to see adding another variable in of i don't for example for me i don't want to see a sfp of this i like to see this type of it moves up there's actually at least two three candles up here before it moves back down you can't necessarily see that directly through a range chart but you can see the intricacies of what's going on through a, you know of the time based chart so you can actually see inside of these of what's going on up here but whilst also having the the, the clarity of the time base bottles are having the granularity of the FPBS and actually the range, well, not the FPBS, but more so the range details of going what's inside there. So you can see here we have this high, you've broken it on the 15 minute, it looks very different to what's actually going on on the range chart. But again, we'll have a system for both, etc. And that's the power of all of this is that you're creating a system. What do you want to see? What don't you want to see? Uh, what are the parameters you want to see going on there? Now, for example, if you're looking for like some form of like crowded positioning or something like that, one thing you can do is go, okay, I want to see X amount of new longs or new shorts opening above the high, X amount of time not spent above there to, to you know, before I'm actually taking the trade. So like, again, if you just take another high, I'm just taking it for this example again, you know, you have a few liquidations up here, 335k. Does that fit your system? Um, do you know this 35 million? It doesn't come in actually above the high, so ne they're not necessarily buying above the high. They're you know they're preempting continuation. How does all of this fit into your system? And that's the most important thing to be thinking about when you're trading order flow. Uh, and it's not just looking at it in the time and trying to get with the flow. Maybe if you're looking at the dom, that's very different. Um, but I'm talking about how I would use it and how you know it adds so many different variables, parameters that you can create and form and put into your system um that it, it you know it is really powerful in that essence okay same thing with like funding rates etc make a process with it make a system and you know you know refine it as you go along test it you know don't just you know i think the the hardest part i'm going on a bit of a rant here but i will do this quickly is everyone will say where do i start uh, and i and the best place to start is kind of just think of something random um now what i mean by that is your first and initial parameter doesn't really matter or your variable doesn't matter because it's only there for a testing basis. And then beyond that, you can then start to refine and, and, and test and continue and move forward. Because if you just, you know, if you sit there trying to find the perfect uh, parameter or variable initially, that's going to be very, very difficult to do. You know, just come up with something random, say, okay, I want to see 20 million of volume above the level or whatever it may be. You know, I want to see at least a million worth of wrecks above my level every time I'm taking a trade. 
an example and then you start taking a few trades test uh, sizing by the way don't just fucking go all all out size with this you start taking a few trades and you go and you look and you, whilst you're also doing reviews as well with the previous moves in the market and you're going this one million size needs to be adjusted you know i'm going to reduce it to 500k i'm going to increase it to 100 uh, to 1.5 mil whatever it may be you see all of a sudden now that base of one million it, you know it sets you up for then just refining and testing based on that I won't go into all of that, but that's what I do in my spare time. Uh, I hope you all found this valuable. I'll catch you later.